Hey guys, I'm here uh, ready to go over some of the 15 minute prompts with you on continuity and change. This is our second run through with these shorter questions where we don't need to really block anything. We just need to uh, mark the prompt and then move on with our lives. Remember, you've only got like 15 minutes to deal with this. So um, that means you probably need to, you know, err on the side of caution here because you'll have to submit um, a second file for this. OK, let me get the camera set up a little bit better. I still want to see the image and the prompt. There we go. OK, a little bit better. Let's see. I'm still playing with my document cam and you guys are probably ready to get to business. All right. So let's do this. Um, Remember the continuity and change question. You're going to see um, any number of things that might ask you why something breaks with tradition or why something challenges tradition. You might also find a question where you're being asked essentially how the artwork demonstrates the influence of a tradition um, or kind of supports um, um, some kind of art making or another. But um, there are a lot of works that we've talked about as hybrid works, you know, that have one foot in the old world or the old tradition, whatever that is, and one world in the new. And I think that's true about um, the Oath of the Horatia by Jacques Louis David. So I kind of use this to look at some of those artworks and see where we had overlap. So um, I'll be putting more of these online later, but let's start this. We're gonna mark the prompt first by bracketing information not tied to a task point. So let's read. This is the Oath of the Horatia by Jacques-Louis David in oil on canvas from 1784. The work demonstrates visual references to a culture of the past as it comments on the present. So see what I mean by hybrid? That's kind of doing both things, right? Looking backwards, but also talking about today. Um, it says, using specific elements of subject matter and or form, describe at least two ways in which the work shown demonstrates the artistic style of an earlier art historical, art historical period. Explain how the work departs from the conventional art of David's own time using specific visual evidence, and then explain how and why David chose to comment on the events of his own day in this way using specific visual and or contextual evidence. Okay, so you can kind of see the pattern. Um, if you looked at Ellie Spears guidelines on what is continuity and change, you can see that we could put in several different artworks to this piece. So um, I want you to, to check on your review module and look over that document and just make sure that you're aware of what to expect on Q2. All right, let's do this. Describe, we know good and well, explain, we know good and well, explain. I see a how and a why. I've only got three verbs here, so I know some of these points are gonna double up somehow. So let's look at our connector words. Look here, there's at least two, right? Okay, um, let me see if I can size this up a little bit more so we're looking at the prompt together. I think that's about as far as I'm gonna get to go, okay? Uh, let's do this. There we go, okay. Um, that's a little better. Um, I've got some more connector words I see that are specifically underlined down here. And I think that College Board, whenever they tie two things into one like statement, they make a big you know, a deal out of these things. You might see them bolded or all caps. Definitely we'll see them underlined, okay? Um, more connector words. I see how there, right? So how does this formally or functionally do what we're being asked there? how and why. I know that's got to be context. So let's go back up here and see. I've got an and or form here. What are they basically saying there? They mean visual evidence, don't they? And they just want to be specific about making you think subject matter could do it for you, or you could talk about the formal properties like the elements of art and principles of design. So moving here, let's see if we've got any more connector words that can help us out. Um, I think the rest of this is going to be mostly freight. Well, I've got an and or down here too between VE and CE. Let's get on with this and basically start underlying, underlining these phrases. Okay, two ways in which the work shown demonstrates the artistic style of an earlier art historical period. Okay, um, two ways in which the work shown demonstrates an earlier so this is where your timelines and all that stuff is going to help you. I just want to emphasize that point, um, kind of like we do with similarity and, and um, a difference, uh, that that's a really important thing. If you choose something that comes afterward, like romanticism, or you choose something like realism, then you're going in the wrong direction and you're not going to get credit for this point here. So 
Watch those important words. Um, then we have to explain how the work departs, right? Okay. Um, so now we're talking about how this is different than before. And look at this. You've got kind of a, a double-edged sword here. David's own time. What was David's own time? Now, he's working in a style that will be known as neoclassical, but at the time that he's training with um, Boucher and the others, that earlier style is Rococo. So you have like a ton of differences here that we could talk about if you understand that of his own time is talking about the end of the ancient regime and the last of the uh, Fragonards and Vatos and all of that that we're going to see. So um, this is different than what we saw in Rococo. I hope that you understand that. Okay, explain how and why David chose to comment on the events of his own day. Well, we know this is the era of the French Revolution. The, the, the decade that precedes it, and there's a lot of civic strife that's going on against the crown because of all of its abuses and excesses, right? So um, basically, I think we've got everything we need there. Why did David chose to own the ends of his own day in this way? We can use VE or CE. We can use visual evidence, which is content or a uh, form. Up here, now we can use basically VE, right? But I'm going to put subject matter and form. I'm going to write it again because um, those are pretty specific. I get to choose, but, you know, you can go back and forth between the two. So I think we'll be okay. Um, all right. Let's label the points. Use specific elements of subject matter at least two. There's your T1. There's your T2. Okay. Explain how, da, 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 da. there's only one task there, so now we have a T3. How is your T4? Why is your T5? And there we have enough information to begin our job, okay? So, all right, so you guys can probably write this on the side. We're talking about Rococo being different than neoclassicism. What earlier things would we use for something like this? I bet you probably would go to ancient Rome. You might even stretch that back farther and go to ancient Greece. Um, you could go back to Raphael and the Renaissance, right? All of those fall into eras that come before, but you kind of need a clear picture of one of those in your mind so that you can make um, connections between the two. With ancient Rome, it's obviously probably going to be subject matter, right? Um, basically the background of an early Roman house, uh, maybe even the floor that comments on the zigzag herringbone stuff you see at the Colosseum. That is all Roman construction and Roman headgear. Um, you might say ancient Greece because we see the formal properties of the Phidian drapery, right? Um, you see um, traditional male and female roles that were also associated with ancient Greece. Um, you might say the Renaissance because remember this thing is in color and it uses the color palette of Raphael if you go back to something like the School of Athens. Um, it's organized the same way too with a central focus that kind of radiates out beyond that. Um, the architecture creates like a three-part panel and this is kind of why it seems like we're watching something happen on a stage. Okay, you could talk about sculptural modeling of the legs and the arms and the muscul musculature that makes this thing look kind of like a frieze rather than just a painting. Um, so there's a lot of information here, basically, that tells us that this is borrowing from the past. For Rococo, guys, it's a, it's got to be the color palette, right? We don't see any pearls, any pinks, any fuchsias, any natural colors. This is all pretty stark and severe compared to that. So um, it seems like this is not entertainment, right? You know, like fanciful entertainments for the wealthy or the one percenters. This is really a civic call to action, even though, believe it or not, the king, Louis XVI, is going to buy this thing after it's shown in the salon for that year. He thinks it's, it's a rally cry to rally around the king. But little does he know that this little arm right there is showing them that it's, it's all about brother to brother to brother, citizen to citizen to citizen, 
So this is really meant to be more about the civic situation at the time. Um, that might help you um, comment on the events of his own day. The king and the one percenters are basically bankrupting the country. There's a famine that will hit in 1788. I know after this painting, but there's a real questioning of whether or not the people at the top of the picture um, actually have the state in mind. Louis XIV got all of this started by saying that he was the state, so absolutism has been around a while, but by the time we get through an unwilling monarch, Louis XV, who's associated with Rococo, and then on to Louis XVI, we really have an inept monarch who doesn't see the coming storm. So um, this is basically a call to the people of the academy that something is more important than, say, that, uh, status or wealth. Um, it's the commitment that we have to one another <clears throat> that's really going to get us through this. So um, that is um, one that I will use. I'm going to pause for a second and get the next rubric up. All right, guys, so now we're back and we're ready to talk about the next piece that you might have gotten assigned for continuity and change. That is Liberty Leading the People from 1830. Um, another one of those works that's, um, no pun intended, revolutionary for its time. Um, a lot of students make the mistake in this piece and talking about it like it is the outbreak of the French Revolution. Guys, this is 1830. Way later, there is a public riot on against the king, um, basically um, trying to create the First Republic here. So I think, oh gosh, my French history, is it Charles X? Um, we're, we're revolting against um, difficult situations. The, the, the Napoleonic era has come and gone by 1815, and people's situations have just not improved, even though the king says that he is you know, kind to democracy. So people are, are starving. They're, they're having a hard time making ends meet. Um, and this seems to be the same kind of civic call that we saw in the Oath of Horatio, but done completely differently, right? Um, there's much more drama and passion here where everything was contained in round arches and panels in the previous work. This is given over to emotion and passion, which makes it ideal for the um, era of Romanticism. And we'll talk about the formal principles and qualities of that. But let's start by annotating the prompt. Uh, this is The Liberty Leading the People um, by Eugene Delacroix in Oil and Canvas from 1830. The work demonstrates visual references to a culture of the past as it comments on the present. So you can see this is basically the same question, right? Using specific elements of subject matter and or form describe at least two ways in which the work shown demonstrates the artistic style of an early art historical period. Explain how the work departs from the academic tradition of Delacroix's own time using specific visual evidence. Explain how and why Delacroix chose to comment on the events of his own day in this way using specific visual and or contextual evidence. Basically, it's the same question as before. So we know that there's going to be a T1, a T2, that we can use subject matter or form. Uh, we have to figure out how it demonstrates artistic connections to an earlier period. Would you guys say that this, this female, this allegorical representation of liberty looks Greek or classical. Um, you could use classical and get away with that just fine. She is bare-breasted, um, basically moving in, in a similar format, almost like the winged Nike of Samothrace, right? Where um, we have Phidian drapery, we have the Phrygian cap that marks her from the revolution. Um, this is very familiar to us as something that would be a classical illusion, right? Um, explain how the work departs from the, okay, not from the era of his time, but the academic tradition, right? Balance, order, control, rational applications of color. Um, that basically is all thrown out the window here. If you can see this thing in color, um, it is rich, rich, rich um, in its coloration. And it's almost too big a scene to be captured in its frame. So there really is like, it's, it's utter chaos. Um, except when you realize he's carefully organized things into a pyramid that keeps the chaos from uh, being too multifocal, right? But um, we'll talk more about the academic tradition, explain how and why Delacroix chose to comment on the events of his own day in this way. This is going to be all about the peasant uprisings. Um, this is what Victor Hugo wrote about in Les Mis. So if you know the story of Les Mis, you can see what's happening here. There are references to that story all over. Okay, so let's do our basics here. Describe, explain, explain, moving on. 
uh, basically how the work departs. Okay, departs demonstrates. I think you need to know that that's it's saying how is this old? How is it new or revolutionary? Okay, um, Delacroix. Let's see. Let's do some boxing. How? Got to do that. And why? And or. Going back here, okay, and or I think is there. Are there any more hows and whys? Whoops, there's one, explain how, okay. When you trip over from how to why, we know that's contextual. So here it is with CE. If you know enough about 1830 and the history of France at that time, then you can use that. Or you can use specific visual evidence here to talk about why he did this at that time. We've got Notre Dame in the background. We've got the Phrygian cap on the head of Liberty, which means basically she's a member of the revolution. She's got the tricolor, which was the flag of the revolution or the Republic. Um, and all around, we see a different cross section of society. We see soldiers who have given up their lives, right? And we see people who look like they've been ripped from their beds in the middle of the night and shot. Um, Notre Dame back here is associated with the monarch and it's shielded in smoke so we can see a new order is coming forward and it is particularly violent, right? It's going to be an aggressive new order. Um, so we got a lot of information there that we can use. Now using specific elements of subject matter or form describe at least two ways in which the work shown demonstrates the artistic style of an earlier Okay, so I'm thinking classical is it, T1, T2, T3, there you go, T4, T5, all right? So I highly think, guys, that <clears throat> you need to, to plan to like print this off or look at it very carefully um, so that you can annotate in your mind where all these points are. Um, it, with a 15 minute question, you would need to do this very quickly and move ahead and your life will be just fine. Okay. Um, no, no need to block this. All right. So that's enough information for you to get through. I'll pause it and all right, here's our last question, guys. Um, it's, um, the David by Donatello. Um, it's funny. We were just looking at David and now we're looking at the David, right? I'll try not to mess that up for you. <laughs> Um, basically, this is the Donatello David, which is an early Renaissance piece. Um, you can see they give you the date, so we're not worried about identification or any of that stuff. We just have to figure out how, how this represents continuity and change. Okay, This is the David by Donatello in bronze, completed between 1440 to 1460 CE. The work demonstrates visual references to a culture of the past as it comments on the present. Okay, we now know we're on Q2. We're talking about this as a hybrid work. It says using specific elements of content and or composition. Notice how they didn't say subject matter or form. This is just another way to do it, right? Um, describe at least two ways in which the work shown demonstrates the artistic style of an earlier art historical period. Now, before we were able to use the Renaissance, Dudes, this is the Renaissance, so we're going to have to go back to the classical world to pull our references, okay? Um, we have explained how the work departs from the sculptural traditions of Donatello's own era. All right, that's going to be the kicker. You got to know where Donatello is coming from and where Europe is at that time around him. What are they sculpting? Um, so you could, I mean, you could visualize the sculpture in the, the late Gothic period and the, the proto Renaissance. It had to be on a building. It had to be in an alcove. It had to be in, you know, in a protected space or part of the architecture. None, nothing had been built that was freestanding because ultimately this could be misinterpreted in the wrong circles as a pagan image, right? So we don't, we don't have those associations being made in the 1300s. And even at the time that um, uh, Donatello does this, this is pretty revolutionary. It's, it's the first bronze, you remember? Holocaust bronze in like a thousand years. So the process is innovative. The subject matter is going to be his own telling of the story. And the fact that it's freestanding is something that is quite unusual for the time. So we'll talk more about that. Um, explain how and why Donatello chose to comment on the events of his own day. <clears throat> so you guys know Medici, right? <clears throat> the support of the Medici are basically what makes this even possible. Because if the church had gotten wind of this, this would have been a real problem for Donatello. 
Um, and he's problematic enough um, approaching the issue this way. So we'll talk a little bit more, but let's do our basic annotations. Describe, explain, explain. There's gotta be more. There's not just three. There's gotta be five points here. At least two. I got and or here as well. Uh, how, right? How and why. I'm gonna do all of those, okay. I got an and or that's sticking out in my mind right there. Okay, what else have I forgotten that was and or, how, why, connector words, anything else, guys? Okay, we're ready to go in and see what we have to do in each of these. Um, how does this work? Demonstrate the artistic style of an early art history work. I'm going to say um, ancient Greece or ancient Rome. Um, for Greece, we could say the Greeks loved sculpting in lost wax, right? Of course, that would be, I guess that's media, so that would work for form, right? Um, we could say, looking back to the classical past, um, do you see him standing a particular way? This is like exaggerated contraposto. I think ancient Greece is going to do you better than ancient Rome on this one, okay? Um, explain how the work departs from the sculptural traditions of Donatello's own era, Let's think about um, medieval sculpture, okay? Specifically Florentine medieval sculpture, which if we could go to Florence right now, I'd show you all over the city, you've got examples everywhere. Sculpture, Mr. J, there we go. And then Donatello chose to comment on the events of his own day. Well, the early Renaissance is going on. You've got to talk about Medici patronage or something like that, right? <clears throat> Um, because without the Medici, uh, this is um, not going to work. You might also say, we've said in class, you know this, um, this might have been like a revolution. Uh, the young are going to win the day, the old are going to die out. So as the young geniuses of the new Renaissance rise, the old world is going to fall away. Um, we could do ideals of the Renaissance here, okay? And it might even be stronger to do that. All right, let's get back at it, okay? Um, we're going to do using specific elements of content. You like subject matter better, right? Or composition. I like that, but we could put form here again. Uh, so that tells me everything I need, right? For that T1 and T2. T1, T2. Explain how the work departs is different from sculptural traditions of Donatello's own time period with specific visual evidence. The freestanding is going to take care of that for you, I think. Um, first one in a thousand years, right? It wasn't attached to an altar. It wasn't attached to a church. So move on. Uh, that's T3. Down here, I've got my how and my why. That's T4, T5. And we're going to, I think you should really focus on ideals of the Renaissance. Okay. Um, you might even talk about um, this image of David as the Florentine symbol, right? <clears throat> Prior to this time, he was a scrappy little military dude, fully clothed in armor. Here, <clears throat> we have the connection between sculpture <clears throat> with the rock in the hand and the military with the sword. You might even talk about that, right? Where Florence is a little guy. Oops, sorry, you can't see that. Florence is the little guy, there we go, versus someone like, say, Pisa or Milan in this case, okay? So there's a lot you could do with that, I think, and that would be a really great question to get to right, okay? All right, that does it for um, the 15-minute questions, A, B, C. Um, so as you go back through this, just see where you and I disagreed. I'm going to be sending out guys later today a questionnaire to see if you are ready for all of these and how I can help you online. So do stay tuned. I'll talk to you more later. See you. Thanks.